Hello pandas. I have a confession. I have often in the past skipped over scrap steel. Just passed it right on by. Because the price was garbage. I didn't feel like it was worth the time. I didn't feel like it was worth the space. But the price has come back. Whether it's here to stay, I don't know. But steel is back, baby! And it's worthwhile to make sure we get the most out of it. So do yourself a favor and check out this video in which we'll go over how to scrap steel, specifically all the different types that you should know about to make sure you're getting the most money for your scrap steel. Now it's true, for the past few years, the steel prices have sucked. But I know from experience, they weren't always this bad. They've just been getting worse and worse as time went on. However, it seems they've rebounded. Whether these prices are here to stay, only time will tell. But we are here to maximize on it while they're good. While they're okay. Now, the great thing about steel is it's pretty simple. You load it up, drive to the yard, weigh in, dump it, weigh out, get paid. Love it. However, I've been taking notice of how many items are actually a higher grade than I realized, and it's been helping me make quite a bit more money from my steel run, so that's why I had to share this. So I want to go over the differences between these categories so you can get a head start on getting paid for your steel. The first one is tin shred. This is the general steel category. Your scrapyard might call it something different. I get seven to eight cents a pound, and this stuff is great because it really doesn't matter how clean it is. As long as it's mostly steel, It'll do. Any type of garbage, pieces of plastic, paint, stickers, other metal, it doesn't matter. You can throw it in the steel shred, as long as it's mostly steel. This includes small things like tools and fixtures and larger things like dishwashers and dryers. And I don't think they'll take fridges, that's its own thing, but you get the idea. If a magnet will stick to it and you don't want to clean it, you can sell it as tin shred. The other categories are the ones that pay more, but there are two rules to all of these. Number one, they don't want any non-ferrous contaminants. So if you have chunks of brass or chunks of lead, they can't go in as anything other than tin shred. And the other rule is no oversized. I'm not sure exactly what the size limit is for oversized. If it fits in the back of a truck though, you're probably fine. If it's oversized, it's worth less. Now the first category of higher paid steel, and the one that caused me to reconsider my opinions on steel, is prepared. This is anything thicker than an eighth of an inch. It's actually really simple, and as a point of reference, a 3.5 mil headphone jack, the, the standard stereo headphones that come with your iPhone, or not anymore, that's about an eighth of an inch. There is actually a second category, number one prepared steel, and that is anything over a quarter of an inch thick. My yard only has one category though, so I get 10 cents a pound for prepared steel. Now for a few examples, a lot of car parts can go in as prepared steel, especially suspension parts, things like control arms or um, suspension springs and rods, but also steel rims and angle iron, things like those universal bed frames and brake pads. Yeah, worn out brake pads. I thought they'd be too contaminated, but pretty thick. Now the other categories are cast iron. I say categories because there are several different types, and it depends on where you go. Some places will say breakable cast and non-breakable cast iron, but the ones that I have experience with are auto cast and regular cast. Now, auto cast is pretty much just brake drums and brake rotors, and then regular cast can be cast iron pipes, uh, antique bathtubs, some barbecue grills, a lot of outdoor decor, uh, the cast iron harp from the inside of a piano. These categories are actually worth a little more than prepared steel, but my yard just gives me the same price for all of them. One thing I learned about uh, cast iron pipe when I recently found a bunch of them is they are often sealed together with melted poured lead, but that's actually really easy to remove because it's generally old and rusty and it's just cast iron and lead I don't know, they don't stick. You just beat it with a hammer. It comes off really easily. Of course, there's stainless steel as well, but that one's pretty simple. If a magnet doesn't stick to it, then it can be sold as stainless. And check out my stainless steel video if you're interested in learning anything about the many different types of stainless, because there actually are a lot. There are lots of kinds of regular steel as well with different carbon contents and different crystal structures, but I think the important thing is whatever your scrapyard is buying, and that's going to be shred, prepared, and cast. 
Remember, of course, that scrap price is the lowest possible value for anything, as always. Uh, Ultimate Recycler made a pretty good video with a whole bunch of examples of steel that he sells uh, as used items rather than as scrap material, and for quite a bit more, including uh, coffee cans full of mixed nuts and bolts for around $10, I believe? Actually, I think it was 10 pounds because he's in the UK. But it sounds silly, but it works. Saving nuts and bolts and all the little screws is kind of important anyway. It may seem small, but they add up really, really quickly. And a bucket full of nuts and bolts has a high density, so it's worth more than you might think. In fact, that's what I've learned about scrapping steel in general. It adds up really easily. If you're serious about making money scrapping metal, then skipping over steel would be a huge mistake. Now, is this a lower effort video than usual? Yes. Is it because I have a busy week of moving houses? Yes. Am I excited to set up a new space designed to make it easier and faster to produce high quality videos to share? Absolutely. Should you like and subscribe so you don't miss any treasure hunting, trash picking, recycling, making money, good time, fun, 100%. Thanks for leaving it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.